Phobias, what are phobias? What do we, what do we want to call a phobia and a fear? A manic fear or a major phobia? It's an overactive imagination. It's where all logic and reason is put on the table and it doesn't matter because it doesn't, nothing makes sense. It's this extreme emotional explosion. Let me give you an example about imagination. I love to tell this story. This is kind of cool. I learned this from Mormon Miguel, who's a close, close friend of mine, Dean of American Hypnotist. Um, I can take a two by four piece of wood, and I can place it from there to the other end of the room, just a two by four. I can ask any of you to walk across that two by four piece of wood, and you know what? You'd be able to walk across it to, from one side to another easily. No problem. You, you, your body would be in complete control. You can almost dance across it. I could take that same piece of wood and I could put it between two buildings or between two houses or I could put it up between two 40-foot ladders. Same piece of wood that you just walked across easily. And I could say, now I'd like you to walk across that piece of wood. Okay. What's going to happen? You're going to look at it. The imagination is going to bring up the emotion of falling. I can't do it. I'm going to fall. All of a sudden, You'll feel the adrenaline pumping in your body. Your heart will start beating fast. You'll start shaking. You'll start losing your balance because your imagination, it will convince you that if I step one foot on that piece of wood, I'm going to fall into the abyss. I'm going to disappear. But yet when it was on the ground, I was able to walk across it perfectly. When your imagination is in direct conflict with your logic and reason, the imagination prevails. Isn't that interesting, though? Think about that. It's a... It's a how can I do it here, but I can't do it there? Because the imagination um, creates the idea of fall. That's a primitive area. Uh, well, it could go into the primitive area, actually. A actually, it could go into the paralympic region. Um, okay, I want to talk about the hypothalamus a little bit. Because the hypothalamus controls our nerves, our muscles, our circulatory system, our uh, immune fighting system. And, it, and it's a small organ within the inner part of the brain. So I want, when you talk to clients or even talk to medical doctors, I want them to know that you know what you're talking about. I want you to know more than they know, so that they'll finally believe this science of hypnotism is real. It was real by all the doctors in the 1700s and 1800s, only because Sigmund Freud was a lousy hypnotist is the reason hypnosis was denounced for his psychotherapy procedures. He studied under Charcot, one of the greatest hypnotists of the 1800s, Charcot had the Sepatory Hospital and Clinic, um, and he was, in, he was competing against uh, Bernheim and LeBault with the Nancy School of Hypnosis in France. Two different methods. Mes Mesmer used to believe that we transmitted kind of a magnetic field out through our body onto the clients, kind of like magnets. Back in the early part of uh, medical history, a lot of medical practitioners used to use magnets as healing processes. We find that even in our current age, magnets can be a pretty big sensation. So Mesmer thought that the magnets helped induce trance. Then he found out that he didn't need to use the magnets at himself. He was like the human magnet. That's what animal magnetism means. It's, it's living energy uh, within the animal, the human being. 